Throughout my work, I have written extensively on various topics that can sometimes blur the line between alchemy and science. In doing so, I have often tried to explain alchemical terms and beliefs in a way that is more accessible to modern readers. To achieve this, I have frequently had to interchange terms or provide modern definitions for alchemical perceptions. One such term is the alchemical notion of the black sun. A reader, for instance, recently asked me about the relationship between the black sun and black holes, which I discuss extensively in my book, The Way of the Death Defier. In that book, I explore complex topics that have led me to redefine the perception of inner alchemists and seers in a way that aligns a little better with modern cosmological theory. The reader's questions were insightful and intriguing, and I believe that in answering them I can help others better understand the perceptions of inner alchemy. The majority of his questions centered around the concept of the black sun. For example, he was fascinated by the idea of the black sun being a singularity at the center of the Milky Way galaxy, and he was surprised to learn that such a singularity indeed exists in accordance with modern scientific theory, specifically Sagittarius A. However, he noted that, according to modern cosmological theory, Sagittarius A is too small to have a gravitational effect on the solar system, and could therefore not be responsible for some of the effects I describe in my work. Instead, he pointed out that the theoretical concept of dark matter is now used to explain the source of the gravity responsible for holding the galaxy together. This discovery sparked his curiosity about the relationship between dark matter and inner alchemy, and its alchemical significance. Let me begin by stating that the following response and descriptions reflect my personal seeing as an inner alchemist. It should be noted that I am not an expert in physics or a similar field, and some of the nuances expressed in this response may be unique to me. Consequently, while my views might align with those of other inner alchemists, there are specific perceptual distinctions that belong to me alone. So, in accordance with the perceptions of inner alchemy, there indeed exists a black hole, which I refer to as a black sun, at the center of the Milky Way galaxy. Moreover, it is also the perception of inner alchemists that there is a black sun of vast proportions at the center of the known universe, and I refer to this grand totality as the Great Black Sun. Indeed, in accordance with these perceptions, generally held by most inner alchemists, there exists a singularity or black hole, using current terminology, at the core of every galaxy and every substantial cluster of light within the expanse of the vast cosmic sea. Therefore, every visible galaxy possesses a black hole at its center, not just the Milky Way, and there is one colossal singularity at the heart of all known space. Each black sun at the core of every cluster of light, every galaxy, is connected to the immense more that resides at the center of all known space. In some ways, you could say they are one entity, yet there are countless variations of this incalculable singularity. These interconnected black suns, black holes, radiate and pulsate, representing a complex interplay of inward and outward motion, following cycles of relative time and adhering to their respective spatial dimensions. Describing this phenomenon through words is challenging, because the concept of size or location pertaining to such singularities defies conventional definitions within the general framework of existence according to current human temporal and spatial understanding. Nevertheless, this phenomenon extends further, because I must also point out that within every square inch of space, there can be said to exist numerous black holes or very small singularities, each pulsating in accordance with that great beating heart, the great black sun, residing at the heart of known space. Before proceeding further, I would like to address this question. What are the perceptions of inner alchemists? Where do they originate from? These perceptions are derived using internal sensory mechanisms, which I often refer to as the inner senses, or the inner feeling sense. This inner feeling sense is accessible to anyone who dedicates sufficient personal attention to its attainment. I have discussed this concept in numerous books, including The Way of the Death Defier. In that particular work, I provide detailed instructions on how to employ the inner feeling sense to perceive phenomena beyond description. By harnessing the inner feeling sense, also known as seeing, 
an inner alchemist can transcend physical limitations and gain direct perception of things that lie beyond the confines of modern rationality. As I said, these are perceptions of inner alchemists, described in a way that is flavored, let us say, by the particular intent of the house or current that I am a part of. In no way do I mean to say that these are truths, because such things, truths, are incredibly hot topics within the human world, and they are the source of so much conflict. As such, I have always invited my readers to learn to use the inherent capabilities within them, and using their mastery of such techniques, I challenge them to prove me right or wrong in accordance with their own direct perceptions. I am not here to expound dogma, something that others must supposedly take as fact just because I said so, some kind of authority figure said so. Instead, I hope that these words are like a springboard of sorts to help you and inspire you to develop your inherent powers so that you are stirred to find your own truth and to know for yourself directly the nature of this mysterious universe. I think that it is very important to mention my lack of any kind of physics authority because I will most likely be saying a number of things and have said a number of things already that are not going to appeal to everyone. But this is a good thing. It is this inherent drive within all of us to be a bit of a devil's advocate and to question everything. That is such a marvelous instinct in humanity that should never be shunted. But it is my hope that in countering my ideas, you don't just repeat what some supposed authority figure said, the latest theories in physics for example, but that you instead try to discover your own truths beyond such authority or my own crazy rambling. As mentioned, the reader says that astrophysics now posits that there is indeed some kind of singularity at the center of the Milky Way galaxy, which is called Sagittarius A. He also says that in accordance with the latest calculations and theories, astrophysicists posit that such a singularity has no true gravitational effect on us. And interestingly, the reader brings up the notion of dark matter, which is if I understand correctly, a needed invention, let us say, that must be created in order to reconcile modern physics inability to understand gravity, the great binding force of the cosmos. So, in one way scientific fact says that, this singularity that they have calculated might exist, cannot affect us gravitationally, but at the same time they do not understand gravity so they must hypothesize dark matter, in order to try to explain the complicated nature and the gravitational cohesiveness of the cosmos. Well, in accordance with the perceptions of inner alchemists, the world is indeed full of singularities of different sizes that are responsible for all the cohesion that dark matter is supposed to explain. In some ways you could say that dark matter represents the now perceivable consequences of the many singularities that are perceived by inner alchemists. It is these unperceived singularities, these mini black suns, existing in every square inch of space, that are responsible for the gravitational lensing and therefore the galaxy clustering and the large-scale structures that are currently perceivable by the outer senses and outer contraptions. I say this because, as the reader astutely points out, according to current theory, the distant singularity at the center of the Milky Way has no gravitational effect on us. However, in accordance with the direct perceptions of inner alchemists, these scientific theories are incorrect. Let me explain. The great black sun, which is the great chaos at the center of all known space, emits emanations like a true sun emitting light. These emanations extend across time and space and are concentrated in large clusters at the center of every galaxy, and these emanations also exist in a less dense arrangement within every square inch of space. The emanations from the great black sun spread across all known space. These emanations have different densities of concentration. At the center of all light clusters, we can find a large density of such concentrations that can be perceived as a large singularity, and it is in this singularity that the gravitational pull from the cluster of emanations is responsible for the cohesion of galaxies. And beyond this, the emanations from the great black sun are also scattered across all known space, albeit less densely. This means that every square inch of space is full of microscopic, indeed nearly imperceptible singularities, and it is these singularities that are now referred to as dark matter, in accordance with current scientific theory. So, in accordance with these perceptions, there is an immense, titanic chaos of immeasurable proportions at the center of all known space. From this central point, 
emanations radiate outwardly to assemble singularities at the center of each galaxy, and these emanations extend further, so that within every square inch of space, you can find numerous singularities that are too small to be detected using current technologies. It is the combination of the totality of the emanations from the Great Black Sun that is responsible for all life and death within this dimension. The Great Black Sun, therefore, is both the giver and taker of life, and its emanations can be seen as the laws by which every single living thing in the entire perceivable cosmos lives and dies. Each one of the singularities, whether it is the large ones at the center of each galaxy or the tiny ones that exist in every square inch of space, beat like a heart. They go through a cycle of contraction, which might be perceived as a black hole in accordance with modern general relativity terms, and then to an expansion cycle where these singularities expel energy like an energy-emitting geyser. And it is these tiny singularities in every square inch of space that are responsible for the movement of energy both within this known physical space and also across other dimensions, unknown spaces. This brings us to the point I made in the book mentioned, which goes counter to the scientific beliefs of modern times. According to the perceptions of inner alchemists, this is not an entropic system, a slowly cooling pie sitting on the windowsill of existence. We will not, according to the perceptions of inner alchemists, turn into some grey goo at the end of time when supposed maximum entropy is achieved. A lowly human might I add, without any of the many contraptions used by modern physicists, when they have been able to train their inherent power to see, can perceive these fluctuations of energy as matter and energy leaving and entering the physical dimension. With great refinement, they can even begin to perceive these infinitely small and infinitely large singularities, the emanations from the great black sun, that are responsible for moving energy across dimensions. Such individuals can then perceive directly that energy is always entering and leaving the system both from other points in space and time within this physical dimension, akin to what may currently be called wormholes, and also from other completely different dimensions beyond perceived physicality. This is very important and controversial because it means that we don't exist in a kind of closed off bubble, we are instead living in an environment that is sort of like Swiss cheese, with energy constantly leaving and entering space and time. In accordance with inner alchemy, entropy is not real. And of course, this raises a significant point regarding current perceptions of time and space. In accordance with general thought, I believe that most people assume that a single point in space is identical to a different point in physical space, dimensionally speaking. However, in accordance with the perceptions of inner alchemy, each point in space can be considered to be slightly different, or perhaps to describe it more accurately, I could say that each point in space is a slight variation within dimensions. What I mean is that each point in space is akin to a slightly different dimension to some degree, and the farther apart two points in space are, the greater the difference in dimensional parallax. I mention this because there are significant complications in attempting to explain the effects of gravity across vast distances. The farther one travels from a reference point, the greater the difference between dimensions, and thus the greater the difference perceivable by the observer, which is directly related to gravity because gravity has a significant impact on certain aspects of perception. These perceptive differences are very obvious using outer instruments and the outer senses. In many ways, I would say that this is an almost insurmountable obstacle to overcome using just the physical senses. Even using the inner senses, these perceptual problems can be incredibly challenging, but they can be eventually overcome as the seer is able to master their inner senses. This is important because it will explain a great many things as physics learns to expand its perceptions. To give you an example, and this is an incredibly hot topic that will most likely get me into a bit of trouble with some, but it is the best example that I can think of. Anyway, what I'm trying to say is that the Earth and the planets that we see around us are not shaped how we think they are. They are not what we think they are. I tried to cover this topic as best I could in the video. Round or flat, the true shape of the Earth. I will leave a link to the video in the description below. But in essence, I could say that the Earth is neither round nor flat but exists within a fluctuating paradigm, a kind of parallax of existence, in accordance with the perceiver's position in space-time and the size of the perceiver. 
I mention this because this parallax of perception not only defines how we perceive the Earth, but also how we can perceive the emanations of the great black sun. The Earth is neither round nor flat. It is both in a sense, and can be a combination of many different shapes from the perceiver's point of view, in accordance with the perceiver's position in space and time, and in accordance with the perceiver's general mass, including the mechanical contraptions available to a perceiver in any relative point. The greater the mass, the larger the object, in a sense, and this is another odd bit of perception that physics still must deal with, I believe. It has to do with not just how gravity is perceived, but also the location of a particular thing within any particular dimension. Size and distance are not truly understood yet. The understanding of size is the key to, first, the warping of space to move within the parallax of a certain dimension, moving from one point in space-time within the physical dimension, and then to finally moving across dimensions to whole other worlds. I hope you understand what I mean. This is a very difficult topic for me to try to put into words, and it must be an even harder topic for you to understand using my odd little metaphors. So, after all of that, I hope I have answered some of your questions and I have piqued your interest so that you might challenge yourself to learn about these inner senses that I speak of, and in that way, you can discover your own truth. To summarize, I could say that inner alchemists can see that the great black sun indeed controls all gravity, and that the currently undiscovered portions of this gravitational force emanating from the great black sun are what some now refer to as dark matter. Perhaps in the future, it may be the case that physics might theorize that there is indeed a center to the yet incalculable cosmos, and that at the center of the cosmos, there is an as yet undiscovered singularity. They might, in the end, perhaps even agree with inner alchemists in believing that in this infinitely dark sea, the clusters of light they refer to as galaxies might be held in place and structured in accordance with the great gravitational waves emanating from this largest singularity. Perhaps then, they may finally understand the riddle of dark matter.